Guys, today we are reacting to the Netherlands. This is why isn't the Netherlands underwater? This video is going to explain that because last time I saw a video that said that the city was under sea level. So under sea level and underwater is apparently two different things in the Netherlands. And this was a video suggested by one of my subscribers. So a shout out to him and let's take a look. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys. In January of 1953, a tidal surge shook the North Sea. The Titanic waves flooded the Dutch coastline, killing almost 2,000 people. Wow. 54 years later, a similar storm threatened the region. But this time, the Netherlands were ready. As the water swelled, state-of-the-art computer sensors activated emergency protocols. Over the next 30 minutes, a pair of 240-meter steel arms swung shut, protecting the channel ahead. Okay. Using 680-ton ball joints, the barrier moved in rhythm with the shifting wind and waves. By morning, the storm had passed with minimal flooding. The first field activation of the Meislandkering had been a resounding success. I'm telling you, the best architects are from the Netherlands. Uh, I've heard so many things, I've seen so many things, and I'm convinced. Is there anyone, any other country better in architecture than the Netherlands? I, I don't know, let me know in the comments. As one of the planet's largest mobile structures, this storm surge barrier is a marvel of human engineering. But the Meislandkering is just one part of a massive interlocking system of water controls known as the Delta Works. The Delta most sophisticated works. flood prevention project in the world. The Netherlands has a long history with water management. The country lies along the delta of three major European rivers, and nearly a quarter of its territory is below sea level. Wow. This geography makes the a region quarter. extremely prone to flooding, so much so that some of the earliest Dutch governing bodies were informal water boards that coordinated flood protection projects. But after the storms of 1953, the Dutch government took more official measures. They established the Delta Commission and tasked them with protecting the entire southwestern region. Focusing on densely populated cities, their aim was to reduce the annual odds of flooding below 1 in 10,000, about 100 times as safe as the average coastal city. Wow. Accomplishing this lofty goal required various infrastructure projects along the southwestern coast. The first line of defense was to dam the region's flood-prone estuaries. These large inlets fed many of the country's rivers into the North Sea, and during storms, they allowed flood water to surge inland. Okay. Using a series of dams, the Delta Commission transformed these estuaries into expansive lakes that serve as nature preserves and community parks. However, this solution wouldn't work for the Nieuwe Waterwe. As the lifeblood of the local shipping industry, this passage had to be kept open in safe conditions and barricaded during storm surges. In 1998, the completed Meislandkering provided the flexible protection necessary. Alongside additional barriers like grassy dikes and concrete seawalls, these fortifications made up the bulk of the Delta Works project which was primarily focused on holding back ocean storms. But in the... So it's kind of like a, a dam, kind of like a, no, not really, but okay, that makes sense. Okay, so it's kind of like, if you see the picture over there, it, it okay, okay. It, it's like an inverted dam, maybe? Following decades, the Dutch pursued additional plans to complement the Delta Works and protect against floods further inland. Under the Room for the River plan, farms and dikes were relocated away from the shore. This left more space for water to collect in low-lying floodplains, creating reservoirs and habitats for local wildlife. This strategic retreat not only decreased flood risk, but allowed for the redeveloped settlements to be built more densely and sustainably. Perhaps no city embodies the Netherlands' multi-pronged approach to water management as much as Rotterdam, a thriving Rotterdam. city almost entirely below sea level. Oh my goodness, When a storm that's threatens, scary, densely populated older districts are protected by traditional dikes. Meanwhile, 
Guys, are you never, like, if you're from the Netherlands, are you never scared that one day it will flood or something like that? Bro, that would be devastating. I mean, I I, I lived in, um, in Napoli for a, a few months, um, half a year, and I was at the foot of the Vesuvio volcano, and I was scared <laughs> the whole moment, the whole time I was there, I was like, I looked at it and I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Honestly. Of course, it's not like a constant fear, but it's it's just like a at the back of your mind fear. While newer districts have been artificially elevated, often sporting green roofs that store rainwater. Numerous structures around the city transform into water storage facilities, including parking garages and plazas, which normally serve as theaters and sports arenas. That is Meanwhile, insane. In the harbor, floating pavilions rise with the water level. Bro, that is crazy. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? What? Are the are the are the roofs like um transparent glass? Form into water storage facilities, including parking garages and plazas, which normally serve as theaters and sports arenas. I would never Meanwhile, in the harbor, floating pavilions rise with the water level. These are the first of several planned amphibious structures, some of which house water purification systems wow. and solar collectors. Wow. These strategies are just some of the technologies and policies that have put the Netherlands at the cutting edge of water management. The country continues to find new ways to make cities more resilient to natural disasters. Oh my goodness. And as the rising sea levels caused by climate change threaten low-lying cities across the world, the Netherlands offers an exceptional example of how to go with the flow. That's a As nice climate change causes natural disasters to flow. become more, well, disastrous. How can we build smarter, more resilient cities and towns? Explore how we use physics to create flexible buildings that can withstand earthquakes, or how scientists are experimenting with a form of concrete that can heal itself. Bro, this is absolutely mind-boggling. It's not only a preservation, right? It's actually, uh, bro, like it, it has different features also, and it's solar. It has so solar panels. It 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 has water purification. It has different features. So it's not only keeping you safe, but it's also doing other things. That is crazy. That is wow. That is engineering, and um, it's engineering at its finest. Honestly, you know, I'm amazed. If you guys want me to react to anything else from the Netherlands, show me crazy stuff like this, like amazing stuff like this, because I'm very interested in, in finding out more. These are things that I never thought existed. It's a... Uh, bro, that's crazy. Anyways, um... I've been reacting to other videos also, so go check them out on my channel and um, give me more information because I always read the comments, okay? And that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Now you can get full access to exclusive content, special reactions to shows, series, anime, full movies, and even request a video of your choice. Just become a YouTube member or join Buy Me A Coffee today. Find out more. The link is in the description. Never break. Always fight. Never quit. Do it right.